Each one of you is important, unique and required leader for any financial management and financial uplift of yourself, your family and the ultimately gains at the development of the nation. I am sure we are very, very fortunate to have our esteemed chief guest, Mr. Anand Srinivasan, for these uh, realistic perspectives and uh, practical tips of how to earn money, save money, that's not enough, but we have to invest it properly and strategically. I think that was the overall uh, uh, expert that he has with a lot of uh, practical tips. I'm sure you would have gained a lot in this one day of uh, the program. Dear friends, all that we have learned, listened, should be put in, into practice. You would have gained a lot of strategies, a lot of ideas, insights. Do not let it uh, go based. Take down, reflect upon it, work on it and upscale or upscale yourself based on these strategies. Get to know more information about how to make it and how to implement it for your well-being and for the well-being of the others in the community and as well as for the growth of the nation. Wishing you all the best for your future career. I am truly touched by the warm welcome that you have given me. First, let me at the outset thank Mr. Ayapa, the Dean of Lila College, Madam Margaret, the coordinator for this department, my good friend and colleague, Alvin Vimal, for making this day possible. I must confess, I am not an academic and I am not very well known for my academic accomplishments. So therefore, for a person like me, it's a great honor to come and speak at this August institution. The theme for today's discussion is Arcanum. Arcanum in Latin means secrets. So I assume that we are talking about secrets of wealth. But if we are looking at secrets of wealth, the biggest secret is there is no secret. And it's the principles are very simple, very easy to follow and very easy to achieve. What it requires is a lot of discipline and discipline over a period of long time. So if you are disciplined over a period of long time, you will definitely do well. So I keep saying this, the length of the runway is what determines how successful you are going to be and how wealthy you are going to be. Most of you here will be in your early 20s. And so you have a long runway with the life expectancy being today at 80 years. You have about 60, 60 years of investing, which is a long time. So even if you invest small amounts of money at regular intervals and have a very low return rate of return, you will still become mind-bogglingly wealthy. It does not this investing and creation of wealth is not rocket science. Most of you think it is rocket science, it is not rocket science. Most of it is psychology. I keep telling my people, investment is 98% psychology and 2% finance. 2% finance anybody can pick up. You don't even have to go to school or college. There was a man called Ronald Reed, who was a janitor in a petrol station in America. And all his life, he was only a janitor and many when he passed away they found out he had left more than 10 million dollars for the local university what i'm trying to tell you is that creation of wealth over a long period of time is one of the easiest things to do in life it is only how determined how disciplined you are and that is what i'm going to talk about today i am not going to talk about Big, uh, tech, big ideas, things like profits, things like how you buy a stock, how to identify a stock, all that you will be able to pick up from any book. Or if you look at my talks on a day-to-day -day basis, you should be able to pick it up. But what is most important is basically to understand what is wealth. 
wealth is money that you don't need that is as long as i am free to do whatever i want to do and not determined dependent that i should do what i need to do to make my monthly living i am truly wealthy if i have to i am tied to a 9 to 5 job or if i am tied to do something which is not pleasant but i do for the sake of the paycheck at the end of the month then i am not wealthy however money how much of money i may possess in life some of the people whom i know really who are extremely wealthy are people who will come up who will come across on the streets and unless you know him by name you will not know how wealthy he was one such man recently passed away all of us knew he was extremely wealthy because of his family surname his name was ratan tata but if you had met him in lifetime you could have seen him in i have seen him in shops in madras where you won't expect a billionaire to shop you would not see a group of people hanging around him with four or five people around him he used to come to a shop by himself look at small things and just go by himself at most he would have a in the city of madras a car or a driver people at his hotel in taj told me that he would stand in the queue for a visa in the reception to pay his bills as a normal person would pay and move so if somebody didn't know that he was ratan tata you wouldn't know that he was wealthy you would look at his look at him as an upper middle class man who had taste for good things in life so for truly wealthy people you wouldn't know they are really wealthy they wouldn't have flashy cars they wouldn't have flashy lifestyles they won't appear in page 3 uh papers they won't be in ipl parties i don't think you have seen ratan tata dance up and down in a ipl match nor have you seen his two nieces and a nephew who have inherited his empire to be standing and dancing up and down in an ipl match truly wealthy people do not need to show they are wealthy i am i am sure you do not know what is buffett's grandson buffett does have a grandson not many people know that and not be many people know what he does for a living so truly wealthy people are anonymous they don't need to display their wealth anybody who displays wealth you should be very careful you do not don't go away by a rolls royce car or a lamborghini or whatever is a flashy car today you don't know how much loan he has real wealth is with people who do not flash wealth there is no need to flash money and therefore true wealth is invisible second and most important thing what is wealth wealth is money that you don't need if you have money that you do not need and you don't have to count every day you don't have to open your portfolio and see what is happening to it every day if you don't keep track of how much you have that is real wealth wealth is not if you are going to have your have phone in the app in the phone hold all your portfolio and you have to keep checking every day what is happening to your portfolio if it goes down it goes down by 200 points you immediately go down and look at the 200 points and say oh my god my wealth has gone down so much or if it goes up 500 points next day you say oh my wealth has gone up so much that attachment to that physical number is not wealth you when i today i think you want me to talk more about equity investing and in equity investing you are a owner of a business you are not holding a stock you are not watching every day what it goes up and down you become a partner in a business if you study the business you want to decide whether you want to be a partner or whether you do not want to be a partner if you do not want to be a partner in a business you don't you choose not to be a partner the most important thing in equity investment is the quality of the promoter if the quality of the promoter is good then you can even look at that company if the quality of the promoter is bad you need not even look at that company if you start looking at companies 
where you do not know the quality of the promoter because you want to make a quick buck. Sooner or later, you will get into serious trouble. I have learned this much to my disgust many times. If 15 years back, somebody had told me that a son of Dhirubhai Ambani would go bankrupt, I would have laughed. You would have laughed, the world would have laughed. But Anand Ambani did go bankrupt. If somebody said the son of Vital Malaya would go bankrupt, we would, I would have laughed at you, you would have laughed at me. Vital Malaya was the owner of Cadbury, he was the owner of Kisan, which is the ketchup you use today, the Cadbury chocolates, the Hest medical, medical thing, plus Kingfisher plus the United Spirits, plus Berger Prince, was all owned by one man called Vital Malaya. His son managed to ruin this all within 25 years. And so this is where those two principles which I have been talking to you about the quality of promoter and display of obscene wealth comes. When somebody is out to display obscene wealth, you can be sure Around the corner is trouble waiting for that company. However mighty, however big the empire is. No empire gets bigger than Dhirubhai Ambani's. No empire gets bigger than Vital Malaya's empire. And these two happened in my lifetime. When I was your age, if somebody had told anybody at that time, that Vital Malaya's son would be bankrupt and would be hiding away from the country, nobody would have taken it. If somebody had told that one half of Dhirubhai Ambani's empire will go bankrupt and his son will be in the streets, nobody would have bought it. All your ratios, all the numbers wouldn't have told you that. And that is exactly why I say to you that psychology is more important than the actual numbers. The numbers can change and change very fast. It can go sink overnight. So why do big empires fail? And what do you need to learn from that? If you give in to your impulsive desires, if you give in to your impulsive desires and needs today, sooner or later you will find that you will not have money to do important things. The only big secret for creating wealth is how you are able to delay gratification. Delaying gratification is the biggest indicator 